Hello there friends and welcome for today's Pathfinder Enhanced Guide we have my first Companion Shifter build and we'll be going with Wendwag as a child of the Manticore, one of the most busted shifter archetypes which is quite a match made in heaven for Wendwag as she's meant to be a ranged sniper, something she will excel at with this build. The Manticore form can provide an absolutely absurd amount of attacks per round, we have 9, 10, 11, 12. Without being a legend and just on a party member that's also not dual wielding, a lot of this comes pretty early too. Right at level 2 you already have 2 spikes per round, at level 5 when you get access to the Manticore form, 4 entire throwing attacks, or 5 with haste, together with 6 at level 7 and it only becomes stronger from there. Trust me, your Wendwag will become a true spike throwing machine gun. We can deal around 120 damage on normal hits and 350 on critical strikes, together with even area of effect damage on kills or critical hits. Even your armor class can be outstanding because you'll be going full dexterity. So without further ado, let us get into our Wendwag Child of the Manticore build. Alright, Wendwag comes with just one leveling fighter, so she's one of the most customizable characters in the whole game. Her starter fit selection is actually amazing too, perfect for the Child of the Manticore, because she already comes with precise shot and also point blank shot, the two feats any ranged character needs in this game. Even if I was creating a child of the Manticore from zero, they would have these two feats. As far as Wendwag's skills, I would rather focus into stealth and also mobility because she'll have very high dexterity, athletics too because of her high strength. Lore nature and perception that she comes with, I don't find them really useful, she doesn't have high wisdom. Right at level 2, your Manticore Wendwag will already be able to throw two spikes per round as ranged natural attacks. This actually has infinite uses and is pretty much permanent, so be sure to activate it on, always, even after you become a Manticore at level 5. Now we'll be keeping Wendwag as a child of the Manticore until around level 18 or so, because it's when she'll get the last really good Manticore ability to increase the critical damage multiplier of her spikes. Sure, the capstone ability at level 20 is amazing too, but we can't get it with one level into fighter. If you're respecting her Wendwag from zero, then I would just keep her as a full child of Manticore. For her level 3 feat, well, you have two choices. You can go with Rapid Shot, which will grant you 3 attacks right at level 3. The problem is, it also has a minus 2 penalty to all of your attacks, and it will take a while before we can remove this. So for the early game, I would rather already get improved initiative here. Wendok has amazing initiative because of her high dexterity. The sooner she can act, if she goes before enemies, well, they will be caught flat-footed for way lower AC. Also, because she is a sniper, the spikes actually have amazing range, she can attack from far away too. So initiative is even better because she won't have to waste time moving towards the enemies, even on turn-based. At level 4, increase dexterity, which is also what you'll be increasing until around level 20. Strength will contribute to your spike damage, but you can just enhance it through gear and buffs, especially the size enhancing spells like Enlarge Person. For your level 5 feat, go with Deadly Aim. This is when Wendwag will get access to the very powerful Manticore shape, which by the way has 4 entire range spike throws. Deadly Aim will increase the damage of each of these spike attacks and I would rather get it before Rapid Shot. Now at level 6, because we just got access to the Manticore shape, which is what we rushed Shifter for, you can already get a level into Alchemist, and the classic Vivisectionist dip to grant Wendwag the Mutagen 4 plus 4 dexterity equal to plus 2 to attack brawls even early, together with the dice of Sneak Attack. Or you can just delay this for later, and get the other Manticore bonuses faster, it's up to you. I'll be picking it later myself, just to show that remaining mostly pure as a Manticore can still work. For level 7, this is when I would at last pick Rapid Shot. The reason is simple, this is exactly when we get Mythic Rank 2, which means Mythic Rapid Shot to outright remove this penalty, and get the extra attack at basically no cost. For level 9, improved critical into Spikes, of course. They don't have the best critical range, but we have so many spike throws per round that chances are some of them will be criticals anyways. For level 11, this is when I would at last go for Shifter's Multi-Attack. 
because at this point, Wendog will also have two extra attacks from her base attack bonus progression, which means Shifter's Fury, if you activate it, will now grant her two extra attacks. This does carry a penalty, however, which we'll easily be able to overcome through Shifter's multi-attack. For level 13, well, we might as well get started into our Shatter Defenses package, so first weapon focus into Spike. And of course, if you want to get Shatter Defenses by 15 instead of 17, you can just replace Improved Initiative at 3 for Weapon Focus and delay Initiative for around level 17. It's up to you. It's just that to me, the extra boost from Initiative early can really help a sniper character. For level 15, Dazzling Display for 17, Shatter Defenses at last, but remember you can pick it before 2 if you prefer. Now, 17 Manticore or character level 18 will be our last Manticore level because of the extra multiplier increase. For level 19 and 20, you have two choices. There's always Alchemist and Vivisectionist, as I've said before, and Ranger and Demon Slayer 2. We might as well pick both of them, so let's go with Vivisectionist first. For your 19 feet, you might as well go for Improved Precise Shot here. The other feats we have left won't really do much outside of Hammer the Gap, but even then, the benefit is minimal. For your Alchemist spells, just through Strike, really. As for level 20, the classic Ranger, Demon Slayer, for the plus 2 to attack and damage against all demons. As for your level 20 bonus ability point, honestly, all of the other points here don't really matter unless you went with a Trickster main character. I suppose you can go with Intelligence just so you can cast the Alchemist spells without having to rely on gear boosts. Alright, now let us cover Mythic progression for our Child of the Manticore, Wendwag. For Mythic 1, you have two choices. Master Shapeshifter will permanently increase both your strength and dexterity, even constitution. So essentially, it's a plus 2 to both damage and attack rolls. Depending on the difficulty you are at, it might be best to pick this already. Otherwise, you can also go for Cleaving Shot, which has great synergy with the Manticore form because of how many attacks you have per round. If you kill an enemy, you'll deal area of effect damage, the same for critical hits. The one you don't pick now, you'll just pick at Mythic 3 anyways, so it's not like it will take much longer. For Mythic 2, as we picked Rapid Shot at level 7, Mythic Rapid Shot to remove the annoying penalty from all of our attacks. For Mythic 3, Cleaving Shot or Master Ship Shifter, depending on what you picked before. For Mythic 4, Mythic Deadly Aim. I would much rather get this earlier instead of Mythic Critical, because as I said before, the spikes don't really have high critical range unless you are playing with a Trickster main character. And well, Mythic Critical only works on critical hits. Mythic Deadly Aim empowers all of your attacks, criticals or normal hits. For Mythic 5, go with Distracting Shots to help your melee allies hit enemies better. For Mythic 6, well, you can pick between either Mythic Initiative, unless you delayed it for later, or get Mythic Critical now into Spikes. For Mythic 7, well, you might as well pick Exposed Vulnerability for some extra damage because of how many attacks we have per round. As a matter of fact, you can even pick this instead of Distracting Shots at 5. It's up to you which one you prefer earlier. For Mythic 8, Mythic Initiative or Critical. For Mythic 9, you can truly pick anything you want at this point. I would rather just get always a chance here. Because of how many attacks we have, failing on ones which are automatic misses is kind of annoying. But there's always last stand, although we are a ranged character, so your wind bug will never really be in much danger. And even the bigger they are, although the benefit is rather minimal. Alright, now let's get into gear for our Manticore Wendwag. For the amulet. Early, just go with the ones that enhance your natural attacks. Eventually, at chapter 3 plus, back rank assistance is by far the best. For the extra attack it can give you whenever one of your allies gets an attack of opportunity. It's just once per enemy, but because of how many attacks of opportunities your melee allies can get at chapter 3 plus, it's certainly a very welcome addition. Especially because we can't really perform ranged attacks of opportunity ourselves. Armor is completely useless for a shifter outside of level 1 to level 4. Just equip Wendwag with a full plate or a chain shirt. Doesn't really matter much. For robes, bestial rags is the best for any shifter in this game. For the extra ratio boost to dexterity and also strength. For belts, at first belts that increase dexterity, later dexterity and strength, ultimately all of the physical scores. For gloves, paws of the bear king are the best to enhance our natural attack, so that we can then leave the slot for back rank assistance. For boots, as always for any dexterity character, one rank sacrifice is the ultimate choice, or you can just go with the newly added cat's boots. 
and you'll then combine it with the Owl Skull for the nice shape-shifting bonuses. For Goggles, just go with Piercing Gaze for the extra bonus against Outsiders. For Cloaks, the same, resistance with the highest modifier. For Rings, early game, just go with Merciless Shot, you can even keep this until the end game. And for the second slot, you can combine Merciless Shot with either Marty's Testament for immunity to mind affecting, which can help earlier, or the classic Ring of Evasion, because you'll get super high reflex from our Dexterity and Shifter class progression, as to avoid most spell damage. Now, the reason I don't have any Ring equipped here is simple. At Chapter 5, you can get the Hammer of Masterpiece Light Hammer from Scylla's last personal quest. It has a very unique and quite powerful property that lets you buff any ally. The buff becomes stronger the less ring and talisman slots you have. If you only have one out of two rings and one talisman, like we do here, the character will get an amazing plus two additional attack spell round for one hour of real time. It really is that good. Even if you have all the three equipped, it's still a plus three circumstance bonus to both damage and attack rounds, so overall, as far as bracers, just bracers of armor. I mean, you don't need armor class, but it's very easy to get high scores by virtue of having high dexterity and the shifter bonuses anyways. But something else you can do is go with the bracers of animal fury for a higher damage and attack rolls boost. Now let's get into weapons and quick slots. The hasty eradicator is, as always, the must-have for any shapeshifting character, because it will enhance your attacks even while shifted by a plus one. Or two, because it also has a haste effect, permanent by the way. As far as quick slots, just the signet of House of Spertilio here, because of the way it works to increase any skill you want, you only have to cast it once. Do it before you change into Manticore, because once you do that, you'll lose access to it, but the buff will still remain on. The same for the Triceratops statuette, if you want to give a pet to Wendwag. We also have the Imp Familiar here, but you'll lose the bonus once you change into Manticore. Well, alright, so this was it for my Wendwag, Child of the Manticore build. If you found this guide useful, as always, please remember to like, subscribe, and also consider becoming a channel member if you want to request some personal videos about anything Pathfinder, even other games too. Thank you for watching, and see you next time, friends!